This lecture is about DNA isolation. And this lecture is going to be divided into five parts. So I'm going to record this long lecture into five short lectures. The first part that we're going to cover, uh, part number one, is cell lysis using detergent. And so our learning objectives are as follows. Uh, we're going to discuss the basic principles that are exploited in DNA isolation, specifically in the areas of cell lysis, disruption of the lipid bilayer, and denaturation of the proteins. So let's begin by looking at uh, a picture of a cell. As you look at the picture of a cell, you know that the cell is surrounded by lipid bilayer, and then it has a lot of organelles within the cytoplasm right here, and then a nucleus toward the center of the cell. Now the goal is to isolate DNA which could be in a chromosome, uh, uh, it could be chromosomal DNA from the nucleus, or in the case of bacteria, it could be non-genomic DNA, such as plasmid DNA. And so the first part of this lecture is going to consist of isolation of plasmid DNA. And then the last part is going to deal with uh, isolation of chromosomal or genomic DNA. So the first question that we want to ask is, why is it that it's important for us to study DNA isolation? Well, number one, we need to learn. We need to learn the technique. We need to learn how to perform the technique. But as students in the biotechnology program, there is an important reason in addition to just learning. There's an important reason as to why we're doing this. And that is that when you came in, we say that we're going to convert you from being consumers of knowledge to developers of knowledge. That's, why, that's what a biotechnology professional does. Biotechnology professional is a developer that comes up with ideas that exploit scientific principles in order to develop solutions to problems in the form of technologies that can be moved from the bench to the market. And so, in order for you to be developers, especially in the area of molecular biology, you need to understand the basic principles that underlie each and every one of these techniques. And so, DNA isolation then consists of some very basic steps. And uh, first of all, you lyse the cell, and then you separate non-target from target uh, molecules, and then you purify. But specifically, here are the steps that are involved. DNA isolation consists of lysis, or the breaking of cells or tissues that are involved. This involves the use of detergent. The detergent could be ionic or non-ionic. This is followed by removal of non-target molecules. You could remove by principles that underlie each one of these, by exploiting these principles, each one of these molecules. For instance, proteins are digested by proteases. You could add proteases to your, to your samples or to your uh, lysis buffer. Uh, RNases are nucleases that will uh, digest RNAs. Um, removal, removal of non-target molecules is followed by isolation or separation of the target molecule, and in this case, DNA, specifically plasmid DNA. Uh, this can be purified by differential solubility, density gradient or adsorption to column that we're going to talk about specifically. All right, let's go on to part two, 
and that is uh, DNA isolation using the alkaline lysis buffer. Now, the learning objectives are as follows. To explain the basic principles involved in lysis of the cell with alkaline solution. How non-target molecules are removed and how target molecules are isolated and separated. So we talk about alkaline lysis. The lysis buffer uh, that we're going to deal with is alkaline lysis buffer. This buffer consists of EDTA a detergent such as SDS and sodium hydroxide that's why it's called alkaline lysis buffer and it usually involves incubation initial incubation step on ice now what are all these components and what purpose do they serve EDTA chelate ions that are necessary for enzyme activity you want to inactivate nucleases so that you don't get digestion of your DNA uh, the absence of these uh, ions, once chelated, this kind of destabilizes the uh, plasma membrane as well. SDS stands for sodium dodecyl sulfate, and this is a detergent, and detergent is used to disrupt the cell membrane and the cell wall, and it also serves the purpose of denaturing proteins. Sodium hydroxide denatures genomic DNA. It separates the strand and it also does that for the plasmid DNA, destroy the hydrogen uh, bonds between the two strands. And uh, there is a very characteristic appearance uh, once you add the alkaline lysis buffer to a uh, sample and we're going to talk about that uh, specifically. RNA when you use alkaline lysis buffer, it actually promotes the cell destruction of RNA. You see, the difference between RNA and DNA is that DNA has deoxyribose, sugar, where this OH on 2' prime carbon is missing, but it is present in uh, RNA. And so one of the things that happen at alkaline conditions is that this OH group then is used to attack this phosphate group right here to form a cyclic compound right here and thus dis destroying the phosphodiester bond. And so it just does that and it begins to digest itself. So that's one of the uh, many advantages of using alkaline lysis buffer for DNA isolation. So the use of detergent, it can be denaturing detergent or non-denaturing detergent. This simply means that in denaturing detergent, all the proteins that are part of the uh, plasma membrane or the other proteins that are part of organelles or in the cytosol, they are denatured because the STS molecule will bind and destroy the bonds that hold the three-dimensional structure of the proteins together. Non-denaturing detergent on the other hand, do not lead to the denaturation of proteins. In fact, protein structures are intact. Uh, detergent also destroys the lipid bilayer right here. And uh, one of the denaturing uh, detergent could be STS. One of the non-denaturing detergent is Triton X100. Uh, Phospholipids. Now, the reason why this isolation process is made possible is because of uh, the nature of phospholipids. Phospholipids have the following characteristic shape. When you look at the structures, you have a phosphate group that is on carbon number three, and then uh, uh, you have uh, uh, fatty acids that are on carbons number one and number two of glycerol. And you can draw a cartoon structure that looks like a person walking where the head is polar and the tails are non-polar. And so what happens is if you were to take fatty acid by themselves and throw them in water, they will form a single membrane structure right here called a micelle where the polar heads will be oriented into the water, non-polar tails are oriented to the interior. 
On the other hand, if you put phospholipid in water, they will form a lipid bilayer, uh, where one layer consists of polar heads and nonpolar tails, and the other layer is polar heads and nonpolar tails. So you have two layers of polar heads, two layers of nonpolar, and they just make up one layer of nonpolar right here. Now, on the outside, this is the outside. This is going to be the extracellular space. It is polar. And this is the cytosolic space, which is polar as well. Now, the reason why the lipid is destroyed is through a process called saponification. Saponification is when you add triglyceride with an uh, alkaline solution, such as potassium hydroxide, it will form the three carbon alcohol and soap molecules, salt for the fatty acid. Now, if you were to drop salt into an aqueous solution, then they form a micelle. Now, the beauty of this is that the formation of micelle will have a polar exterior oriented into the water and non-polar interior, which will sequester non-polar lipid droplet uh, if they are in the, uh, in the water. And so, when you add detergent to lipid bilayer, then uh, the soap will interact in a way that it will integrate. Uh, let's say this is the uh, uh, membrane right here, and let's say this is the uh, soap micelle. They will that soap micelle will interact with that uh, lipid membrane and destroy it and uh, associate it with it like that. And so, again, uh, detergent would be ionic or non-ionic. Uh, we've mentioned that uh, the molecules can uh, self-associate. And this is what lysis process looks like right here. You have lipid bilayer intact with transmembrane protein. When you add detergent, then you begin to tease away the transmembrane protein. This is if it is non uh, non teenagering detergent and protein interacts with the uh, soap molecule right here and then soap molecule will also interact with the membrane uh, lipid bilayer to destroy that and separate the proteins from uh, the lipid uh, again if you were to so once you add the detergent it will destroy that structure of the membrane if you were to dialyze away the detergent that membrane structure will come back together intact. And the effect of STS on the protein is such that when the STS combines with proteins, it will cause the protein to be linearized and gives it a net negative charge. Now, uh, proteins have three different unique characteristics that separate one from another. And that is that in the three-dimensional structure of proteins. Proteins have different net charge, shape, and molecular weight. But when you add STS, you denature this protein so that you remove the effect of shape and you remove the effect of net charge because now they're all net negatively charged. And so when you separate this by a polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, you're only separating the proteins based on their size. Next lecture will cover part three, the neutralization and phenol extraction. Thank you.